Okay, guys, time to move. Come on, up and at them. Let's go. Come on, here we go. Come on. You know, we've come up with a lot of cage designs over the years. We're the followers of Joel Salatin from the first edition, I believe, of his book, Pastured Poultry Profit. Profits back in the mid 90s, mid to late 90s. And we built our first cage that was a spitting image of, of his and 10 by 12 it was. And we started out with like 90 some birds. And then we whittled it down to 70 and then kept going down. And finally, like, what are we doing? We don't need all of these. We were selling them for you know, not making anything on them and, and that kind of thing. So we just decided to cut that cage in half. Instead of 10 by 12, it would be 6 by 12. No, 6 by 10. And so then we decided it was it was falling apart and hard to move and the chickens would get caught underneath it and everything else and it was clumsy and awkward and lifting the top to put the water and the feeder in and out it was it was awkward i thought we can we can do better than this so we have this is probably our fourth or our fifth revision since we cut that original cage in half and this is our final model this is a 6x10 mobile cage with a 3 foot height and you can pull it in either direction. There is a bar underneath that travels on a short length of chain so that, that uh, pipe rolls with the cage on both ends. So that, that covers up that gap. So it rolls over irregularities and it closes the gap when the cage is stopped. So young chicks and small critters can't get in and out. We'll take a little walk around this thing and I'll show you some of its features. Now, as I said, the cage pulls readily the same way from each end, so it's multi-directional. It has a door on each end so that it's easily accessible. A person can climb in there, it's two feet wide and about 30 inches high or so. It's really well braced. It's really a strong cage. It's not going to fall apart. It has one half inch metal conduit, the same bending procedure that I use for the hoops and for the arbors I use for the cage. And I use a tarp, just a, a six by eight tarp that I cut back. I cut some off and then I use the uh, the tape that you can buy for these tarps that's really quite the tape and I tape that fold and then I just add grommets and then just cable ties and then at the bottom I just use a washer through a wood screw or a, uh, a lath screw with a big head and then just screw that that tarp to the to the cage. So this tarp is removable because, well, for one thing, they don't weather very well. And another thing is in the winter, anything that's a permanent cover like this with two feet of snow on top, it's a lot of, a lot of weight. So it would tend to collapse. Now on the bottom, we have, get over here where it's a little cleaner, this is three-quarter inch poly tubing, water, water line, that is screwed in, and that forms the runners. So it pulls easy enough. It pulls fairly easy, but it's substantial enough, it's heavy enough, that it's not going to take off in a wind. And if you anticipate a wind that's going to exceed, say, 50, 60 miles an hour, just go out and tip some cement blocks on the ends of each of the runners and I think you're good to go. 
Now a feature that you may not see in a lot of cages is our design for a automatic water. Now there are automatic waters and we had the bell waters like Joel Salatin had. We bought those and uh, gave them to some friends when we, we decided we'd come up with our own. And we just use the same mini float valve that we use in our garden stream self-watering planter kit. And then it's connected by tubing just through a grommet to one of these three and a half gallon buckets I get for you know a dollar a piece at the local supermarket. Now you need to keep a cover on this because otherwise you'll get all kinds of debris in there and then that that orifice in that mini float valve can plug. Keep a cover on it, you should be good for the entire growing season. So then you just, just fill it with water and that reservoir just travels with the cage. Now the cradle I made for it, I just made out of that PVC trim board. Three, whoa, sorry chicks. <laughs> Three quarter inch PVC trim board that I just screwed to the to the uh, ridge there and then I just cut out on the ends so that it'll snug in there. So it just sits on there. It's not going to go anywhere. And we'll, uh, we'll do a short video, a separate video on how to build one of these waters. I think you'll be pleased. So we're also going to do a video on why we have red and white chickens. Now. The red ones are the red rangers, which many of you are familiar with. We decided not to grow them this year, but then I came across 11 of them that were two weeks old and I couldn't pass it up. So I got them and then the next day I got the Cornish Cross. And I'm going to talk about my thoughts after doing that on why I don't think we're going to raise Cornish Cross anymore. But that's for another video. What I'm going to do is put together a slideshow on this video that will give you, at least those of you who are somewhat handy, a tutorial on how to build one of these.